Attention all personnel. Incoming podcast. This is MASH Matters. Well, they said it would never happen. They said there's no way when you start this MASH Matters podcast that you're going to make it to 70 episodes. But we proved the naysayers wrong. Here we are, episode 70 of MASH Matters, Jeff Maxwell. Wow, all you naysayers who were lined up out on the fields Mm -hmm. and going thumbs down. You'll never make it to 70. You'll never make it. Ha! Yep. Take that, you naysayers. Here we are, 70 episodes in. In, and uh, we're going to have some fun today. This is going to be a little bit different. Occasionally, we do episodes where we answer listener questions and then we'll sprinkle in some voicemails here and there. But this episode, we're just going to cram a bunch of voicemails because we want to hear from you. We want to hear the stories about MASH and your questions in your own voice. And if you listen to this and you think, you know, I'd like to send a voicemail in, you can do that. 513-436-4077. That's the number to call. Just keep your voicemail under three minutes or it'll cut you off. And- And keep your voice down, as a matter of fact, as well. Yes, please. Use a civil tone, if you would. Please. What you're going to hear today is a lot of uh, older voicemails, because we keep getting more new voicemails in, which is great. We love it. Keep them coming. But I feel feel kind of like a car dealer. We got to move the old models out to make (laughs) room for the new models coming in. So we're slashing prices on these old voicemails, and we're going to clear them out today. (laughs) Sounds good. Come on down here to Crazy Jeff's. Let us clear you out. Come on. We'll clear you out and clear you up as easily and quickly as possible. Come on down. We're just going to jump right in. This one is coming to us from Carrie. Hi, my name is Carrie, and I am calling from Martinez, California, uh, in the Bay Area. And I just found your podcast and started listening to it the other day. I am a 40-year fan of the show, and I started watching the show in 1979 when I was nine years old. So I've been pretty um, obsessed with the show for 40-plus years. I'll be 50 this year, and you all have made such a huge impact on my life that I had to call in and uh, give you a show idea. Um, it would be awesome to hear a show talking about the actors that have already passed away um, and honor them in some way. Everyone from McLean Stevenson to Larry Linville to David Ogden Stiers to William Christopher, Wayne Rogers. And, you know, I know that some of the crew have also passed. Uh, But I thought, wouldn't it be cool to hear a show about those folks um, who are no longer with us? Uh, So I thought I would call in and see um, if I could throw my idea there and uh, love the podcast so far. Keep up the absolutely amazing work. Just really grateful you guys are out there and uh, really talking about the show in a a really in-depth kind of way. And I'm just very grateful to have found you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Wow. Jeff, I believe that is one of our Patreon majors, Carrie Gajowski. Back before she was a major. This is back when she first discovered the podcast and sent us that voicemail. So, uh, Carrie, if that's you, I'm pretty sure that's you. If it's not you, I'm sorry, but at least we gave you another plug as a Patreon VIP. Yeah. So she gave us a great idea that we have not yet acted on, which is uh, doing an episode where we talk about the actors who have passed on. And sadly, quite a few of them have passed on. And uh, I feel like we've tried to do that in some ways whenever we do talk about some of these actors. Jeff, you've given a lot of insight into these characters. You've talked a lot about Wayne Rogers. We've talked about Bill Christopher. We've talked about Alan Arbus. You know, whenever we are talking about one of these actors, you have given us some insight. And and also we've uh, touched on that as well with some of our guest stars. And Loretta has talked about Larry Linville and McLean Stevenson. But, uh, you know, maybe one of these days, Carrie, maybe we will. Maybe we'll do an episode where I'll just throw out names and Jeff, you can just give me some remembrances of those actors. Yeah, I I actually kind of think it's sort of a decent idea to talk about uh, specifically a show involving those folks who are all very, very important to the structure and fabric of MASH. And without them, we wouldn't be talking about them and we wouldn't have this podcast. So I think it's a pretty good idea. Thank you, Carrie, very much. But just be aware, Carrie, there will be no payment and no residuals for this idea. So just (laughs) forget it. Yes. When you call and leave an idea for us, well, stealing is not really the word. I don't want to know. Not the word. Not the word. We're just, you know, adapting. Yes. (sighs) We're adapting the idea and making it our own. If anybody says to you that it's theft, 
forget about it. If they say, call your attorney, you forget about it, <laughs> Carrie. You call us. We're your friends. So thank you very, very much for that idea. But that it's a good idea. I, yeah. think, I think that's in the hopper. I think I like yeah. that. We'll throw that in the hopper. It'll come out about the same time that our season six retrospective will come out. <laughs> Um, which I think is slated for some time in the spring of 2028 by now, I think. 2028, yeah, okay, all right. Well. But thank you, Carrie, thank you. And thank you for your support on Patreon. We'll be giving more Patreon salutes here in just a bit. But first, we have another voicemail, this one coming to us from Shirley. This is a longer one. In fact, this is actually two different voicemails that we edited together as one. <laughs> so it is a little bit longer than most of our voicemails, but she has some important things to say. So this is Shirley. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Shirley, and I'm calling you from Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, I'm calling because you asked a couple in the, I think, episode before last about people who watched MASH in the order, the original order of broadcast. Well, that was me. Um, I was born in 1965. I'm the youngest in a large family. My dad fought in World War II and Korea and just hated war more than anything. I think that kind of defined him in a lot of ways. So we fled to Mexico to hide my older brother from the Vietnam draft. So MASH grew up as I did. It was really one of the stories of my adolescence and early adult. Well, adolescence, really. It was a major kind of moral parable for me. As I approached puberty, MASH was still bogged down in just humor, and it seemed like war was not really one of the characters in, in the series. The male characters had some depth in the early episodes, but the female characters didn't seem to. Like Margaret and the nurses were just objects of ridicule and possession. And, you know, that matched what I experienced in middle school and it might have been true to the times, but it left me feeling ashamed and feeling and thinking that no matter what I did, I would be a, a target. But as the show matured and Loretta Swit and Alan Alda and others had a bigger voice in the gender dynamics of the show, I felt along with them that I had the right to my own desires and my own reasons for those. I could be funny, deep, vulnerable, sexy, and proficient. Sure, as you said in an earlier episode, gender roles of the early seasons reflected the mores of the times in which it was set. But look, I would not have survived spiritually, mentally, or even physically as something for others, i.e. male others, to act upon. I just wouldn't have made it. I needed the emerging mores of the 1970s. I learned from so many MASH characters. Father Mulcahy inspired me to become a chaplain, struggling to be spiritually intact in the face of human comedy and tragedy. Margaret owned her professional and sexual desires. Potter faced the sadness and honor of a lifelong war surgeon. Sydney witnessing suffering. Charles holding on to artistic and aesthetic values in humanity. Radar and Klinger keeping the world turning while thinking about home. BJ just being decent and Igor and Nurse Kelly making it through every day. I could go on through every character. So the early seasons may have reflected the mores of the times in which the show was set, but the later seasons helped me believe in a world in which my own life would be livable. When Goodbye, Farewell, and Amen showed on February 23rd, 1983, I was a senior in high school. I was reeling from my father's suicide, worried about my mother's future, and beginning to feel my own personal possibilities. And MASH helped me to get some language, images, and characters that I could trust in that journey. So fast forward, I went on to become a healthcare worker, justice seeker, and a chaplain. I watched MASH again recently in order, episode for episode, for the first time since 1983, now that the pandemic has settled in. And I want to say after 37 years, MASH still gives me insight into the human condition. I've put a lot of thought in my life into what the experience is of trauma survivors, and I want to thank you for focusing on the show and thank all of the, the people who, who helped to create MASH and helping me uh, being one of many voices as I find that framework. Thanks. Love you much. Bye-bye. Wow. Well, 
I just want to let everybody know that Shirley's book will be coming out sometime <laughs> around December. Is it December or January? Maybe, maybe 2022. I'm not sure. It's just a transcription of that voicemail, actually. That's the entire book. Yeah. That's all it is. As a matter of fact, after <laughs> if we played that one more time, we could just shut this podcast down. Well, folks, we're out of time. Uh, thank you so much. Well, there's nothing more to talk about, really. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, that was an, I think, and plus that, I think Shirley could become a limited series on Netflix. Yeah. Holy moly, what a life. Yeah. Wow. I I I surely that was a that was a remarkable essay. <laughs> I was very impressed. I followed along with you and boy, that was uh, that was a remarkable uh, description of your feelings and uh, your assessment of what you saw and your assessment of your feelings, your family and you becoming a chaplain. Yeah. You know, when you hear these things and I again, I've said this a million times when I was working on the show, It was a job. Mm -hmm. Uh, But when we hear the kind of impact that that job had on everyone, it's really moving. And uh, boy, thank you, Shirley, for that remarkable exploration of a television show and how it impacted your life. And I would encourage you to write the book. (laughs) What the heck? Yeah, why not? We'll write a book. We're going to move on now. Here is a voicemail from Chad. Hi, my name is Chad. I'm from Texas. I called into question about Hot Cherokee a while back. I have an answer about the guitar playing on MASH. The guitar player in the episodes is named Tommy Tedesco, and he was a member of a group of musicians in California called The Wrecking Crew, and they have a documentary on Netflix called The Wrecking Crew. You can check that out, and uh, he talks about all the TV shows he played on. Also, I have a quick question about... The helicopter pad and the episode, I believe, called Hepatitis, where Frank, uh, they think Frank has hepatitis and they want to use his blood on a prisoner of war. The helicopter pad is up on top of a hill behind the mess tent, and there's another one low in the camouflage net. And sometimes you will hear the announcer say, wounded on the upper and lower pads. That is the only episode I saw where there were two helicopter pads. Uh, any comments on that? Thanks. Y'all have a good day. So, Jeff, how many chopper pads were there out at the ranch? Uh, beats the heck out of me. I, <laughs> I really don't know. I All I remember is one big pad where the helicopter used to land, and that's what we call the helicopter pad. I don't know. You know, there may have been an, a scene or something and they needed to shoot a helicopter landing someplace else. I don't know, though. I'm sorry. I wish I could answer the question more intelligently or more succinctly, but I, I know of no other helicopter pad other than the one that we all know and love. Yeah. Well, if you go to the MASH wiki, it's uh, mash.fandom.com slash wiki. <laughs> we will put a link to this in the show notes so you can see, but they talk slash about wiki. the helicopter pad. They talk about- I just thought it was funny when you said slash wiki. I don't know. <laughs> that made me laugh. Have you ever had your wiki slash? I don't want to talk about it. I don't, don't recommend it. Especially if you're swimming in salt water. Definitely <laughs> don't do it. Do not. Do not slash no, your wiki. Slash no. your wiki. And <laughs> uh, we will put a link to this in the show notes, but you can see it does talk about there being two pads, the upper oh. chopper pad, the lower chopper pad. This is from the side. It says the 407 7th MASH had two chopper pads. The upper chopper pad is the larger one with space for at least two choppers to land. It is located on high ground behind the mess tent. The lower chopper pad is at the same level as the MASH buildings and tents at the edge of the camp beyond the mess tent and the supply tent. Far be it for me to argue with Wiki. Uh, I ain't going to do that. Wiki is righty. Yeah. It's fascinating when you look at this story online and you see uh, they've broken it down by episode. The lower pad is hardly ever seen. You don't really see that in most episodes. The upper pad is where you would see most of the action. But yes, there was another one and uh, you can read all about it. Just go to mashmatters.com and look for the show notes for episode 70 and you can read all about the two chopper pads two count them two two chopper pads in one not one not one but two at crazy jeff's okay <laughs> moving on here is another voicemail from micah my name is micah ballard i am from chicago illinois currently fishing on the milwaukee river you can hear my outboard as a background but um six minutes into the first episode and you were taking requests um, as far as how the show is going to run. And the gentleman had suggested to be 
create that as a old time radio show and you guys shot it down because yeah, it would be frustrating seeing the actors try to portray, you know, the main stars of Bash. But um my suggestion is to take that gentleman's comment and put a twist on it. Don't do the old time radio show about the main stars, do it about the enlisted guys. I mean you already have Igor, that's one actor that you will not need to uh impersonate. You have the real deal right on the spot. Nurse Abel and you know, just the gentleman that made you know periodic brief appearances throughout the show. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the new Star Trek cartoon that pretty much follows the same premise, but I think if you were to do a radio show about maybe, you know, the enlisted characters, I don't know, maybe a once a week thing, but nonetheless, that was my uh, suggestion. Thank you very much, and I look forward to listening to the rest of the uh, episode. Bye. All right. He's talking about a conversation we had in one of our early episodes, which was, you know, like three years ago. And I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday, Jeff. So I don't even really remember this conversation that we had. But somebody said, hey, you you guys should do like a radio, old time radio version of episodes of MASH. And we said, what a terrible idea. Don't ever, ever write to us again. You are banished from contacting us. Do not make eye contact with us and never mention us again. We we were not very nice back then, were we? (laughs) No, no, no. we were were real jerks. A couple of jerks, yeah, really. (laughs) Great. I'm surprised anybody's still listening at all. I am too. Wow. But I mean, I have a vague recollection of it. And I think what Micah said there was that it it would be a lot of work to try to do that. And plus, you know, without the original actors, it wouldn't be the same. But his idea is to kind of do like a a separate storyline, like an alternate storyline where we just focus on the enlisted personnel. And uh, he brought up the Star Trek cartoon, which I believe is on Paramount Plus. Uh, called Lower Decks, where they focus on all the crew members that you always saw walking in the background of uh, Star Trek. So it's an interesting idea. And, you know, if somebody out there wants to uh, write a script and do like a a little radio play and record it, by all means, send it to us and we'll play a snippet of it here on the podcast. Or if they would like to have us participate in it, just send a check for (laughs) $52,348 to MASH Matters and address it to Jeff Maxwell. And I will be sure and give it to uh, Ryan Patrick. Or- That's a very specific amount. You don't have like gambling debts. That you're- I don't want to talk about that right now. Okay. All right. Sorry. And you know, you actually, you know, this is a pretty, I have to say that we have a wonderful group of listeners who are very creative. And mm-hmm. they came up with really terrific, fun ideas. Yeah. You know, we shot it down a couple of years ago, but I get it now. <laughs> I mean, it could be a, f- a lot of fun. And just yeah. to, you know, to have people explore these ideas creatively is is really fun. And if somebody wants to put together a production, got to get an executive producer, a producer, a, uh, you know, a couple of <laughs> wardrobe people. You don't need wardrobe people. Radio. Everything's green anyway, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but it's a it's a good idea. And as a matter of fact, I have to go back to the gentleman who left the message uh, a bit ago about the guitar player. Yes, um, yes, yes, yeah, Mr. I Tedesco. To that. Yeah. that name, I actually know that name pretty well, and I don't know why. I'm going to have to look that up. Well, we did talk about that several episodes ago. Uh, somebody talked yeah. about who played the guitar, and uh, there were conflicting stories out there yes, in the uh, you know yeah. the, the the web uh, universe. Uh, but Tommy Tedesco of the Wrecking Crew was one of the names credited yes. with playing one of the two guitars that play at the beginning of the Mash theme song. Speaking of the MASH theme song, yeah, let's jump right into another voicemail, this one coming to us from Mike. Hello, Jeff and Ryan. My name is Mike. I live in Orlando, Florida. I got into the podcast uh, listening to it during the uh, COVID shutdown, and I got to say, I absolutely love it. Listening to all the previous episodes, especially one that got mentioned, I forgot the episode of, uh, I think it was actually, it was Adam Ribs of the guy saying he's from Joliet, Illinois. I myself am from the Joliet, New Lenox area of Illinois, and I can tell you that is highly frowned upon. It is not Joliet. There's nothing jolly about it. But, yeah, absolutely love the podcast. One question I have for both of you. Have you guys noticed in the later seasons, probably around after season five, the intro theme song has changed? I should say the instrumental portion of it, the tones, like it sounds like they re-recorded it. Also, in the later seasons, seasons 10, 11, you got almost, they switched up the ending 
outro score as the beginning for the intro. I don't know if you guys have paid attention to that. I noticed that listening on Hulu. Other than that, keep up the great work. Also, I love supporting you guys on Patreon. And I love the uh, sticker package that you guys sent. Guys, keep it going. Keep doing a great job. Thank you very much. Bye. Well, thank you for supporting us on Patreon. We appreciate that. And we glad you like your stickers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are differences in the theme songs. I'm going to play just a couple of snippets here. This is from season one. So that's a snippet from season one, the intro, and that pretty much stayed uh, like that for, I think, the first five seasons. Then in season six, you had a little different sound. Here's a snippet. As you can hear, it seems more polished. It has more of a robust sound to it. And then uh, in season 11, they used this as the theme song. So you have three significantly different versions, and I think you even have more variations beyond that. Why they took the music that they usually played over the end credits and decided to open the show with it, all I can guess is the end credits are about 30 seconds. The opening credits are about 45 seconds. So maybe they just needed 15 extra seconds. (laughs) I mean, it Mm -hmm. could be, you know, something as simple as that. As for why they did it, you know, when we talked about uh, recording the theme song, A few episodes back, there was a story about that every year they would re-record the theme song, but they didn't always use it. So maybe they just finally decided, hey, let's use one of these. And they switched it out. Not sure why they did it. Uh, If anybody knows or can point us to a resource for that, all we know is that there are several different versions out there. And there are probably even more versions than what you just heard. Probably some guys sat around and tried to get creative and, you know, wanted to do a little something special or whatever. And, you know, the music departments go, how about this? And let's try this and let's be cool and let's do this. And yeah run it by the executive producers and they go, yeah, okay, that sounds good. Or, you know, somebody was drunk and didn't know, or (laughs) I have one actually. Wait a minute. Let me, let me start this. Okay. Shut it off. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, that was one that came uh, from, uh, yeah, I, I've had that. It's a secret one. I don't let that out to too many people. Uh, wait, I, I'm just now getting a uh, text uh, from yeah. the family of Tommy Tedesco. Oh. Uh, they said, please stop. <laughs> okay. That's all. That's all they said. Don't know what that means, but okay. okay, let's keep this going. I've got a couple more voicemails to get to. Here's one from Michael. Michael Red, Marietta, Georgia. I've been a fan and been watching MASH since it came on the air. It was it's truly a great show. It, it stands the test of time. Just finished listening to the Adam's Ribs F podcast episode, and that is my favorite of all time. I record it, watch it as many times as I can. But I do want to say that I usually listen to your podcast while on my daily walks. I try to get... uh a couple, three miles in a day, and your podcast is just the right length for me to do that. Thank you, and please continue, and at some point, I will catch up. Y'all have a good day. Bye. 
I, it sounded like he recorded that while he was walking. Not only does he listen while he walks, he calls into the podcast while he's walking too. Calls in. Yeah. See, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do two things like that. I would. <laughs> I could call in or I could walk, but I could not call in and walk. The very first time I listened to this voicemail, halfway through is when he starts talking about going for a walk. The first half of it, I was a little concerned for his welfare. I thought maybe he was having yes. some kind of medical emergency or something in the first half. But then I realized that he was walking. Yeah. Well, that's cool. But he liked uh, Ad, uh, Adam's ribs, which is great. Uh, one of my yeah. favorite episodes, too. You know, liver yes. or fish. How are you? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. What a great thing to listen to while you're out walking. Yeah. But be careful out there. <laughs> yes, please. please. And, you know, uh, while we're on the subject, whatever the subject is, <laughs> it is true that there is a, a certain um, measurement and qualification of uh, being able to do like an elliptical machine or doing a treadmill and being able to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Apparently, if you can have a conversation while you're doing a treadmill at a sort of an average pace, that's really good. Mm -hmm. If you go, <gasps> and while you're doing it, that's really bad. So just be careful out there, everybody. <laughs> so when you're on the treadmill and you're listening to MASH Matters, don't talk to anybody. <laughs> Please. This public service announcement has been brought to you by Jeff Maxwell. The more you know. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> Uh, All right. Who else do we have? This is fun. We don't have to do much. Everybody else is doing right. the show. Everybody this else gets to do the talking. You don't All have to right. listen to us as much. It's fantastic. Whole new concept. If you'll notice, we haven't really had many answers to these questions either. We've just skirted <laughs> around actually answering any of the questions. It's been kind of fun. We have one more voicemail to get to. But before we do that, Jeff, we want to salute our Patreon VIPs. Thank you to Private Andrew Eastwood. And Private Rebecca Pettinger. Corporal Jason Vivona. Corporal Mike Bacon. I always like bacon. That's great. Captain Leah Walker. Captain Marie Westerland. And Dr. Sebastian Kreese. Thank you for supporting us on Patreon. You too can become a Mash Matters VIP for as little as $3 a month and unlock some cool rewards. Just go to mashmatters.com slash support. A couple of things there, Jeff. Yeah. Dr. Sebastian Kreese is from Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Our friend, Captain Marie Westerlin, we have heard from before. She is from Sweden. Oh, I've always wanted to visit Sweden. I hear the scenery is so tall. Also, Rebecca Pittenger, Private Pittenger. Mm -hmm. We actually uh, spoke with her not too long ago because she is friends with Major Carrie. Gajowski, and if you sign up at the major level, after three months, you get a, a Zoom chat with Jeff and myself, and uh, she's friends with a major, and being friends with a major has its privileges, because uh, Rebecca got to sit in on the Zoom call with us, so that was fun. But thank you, Rebecca, for also supporting us on Patreon. Also, a couple of episodes ago, we had sent out a VIP salute to uh, Corporal, uh, who is supporting us from the Ukraine, and I tried to pronounce her name, and I thought I did a pretty good job. I don't think I was anywhere close to it. We finally heard back from her, and I'm going to see if I can get this right. Kaseyanaya. Kaseyanaya. I believe I said that right. Yes, I think you did. I have no idea if I, that's true, but I think you did. Well, I thought I said it right the first time, but I was oh. nowhere near correct. <laughs> Kaseyanaya, thank you for supporting us from the Ukraine. Now, let's get to our final voicemail. This one coming to us from Alicia. Hi, Jeff and Ryan. My name is Alicia, and I'm calling from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Been a fan of the show since I was a very young child. I was almost three when it aired for the first time, and my dad was in Korea. First off, Ryan, I do apologize for not recognizing you on Facebook. I about fell over when I realized that it actually was you. It made my whole day better. And Jeff, MASH would not have been MASH without you. You have always been one of my favorite characters. I cannot go into detail as to why MASH matters to me because I can't talk while my, I am so emotional and I don't want to embarrass myself. So I will have to email that to you at a later time with hopes that you can understand the impact it has made in my life. I have never seen MASH in chronological order, so I have started that and I am enjoying it tremendously, even though I have seen every episode hundreds if not thousands of times. A few questions and comments for you both. Somebody has to know who played General MacArthur. It is driving me mad, I tell you. I am also assuming that all those rocks used in the farewell goodbye episode, I think all those rocks are the ones that Igor had to paint. You're all thought. 
I think we all need to band together and find Dan, the soldier from Maria Bryant's true story, to see if he did make it home from the war safe and sound, as I am surely hoping that he did, and he had a great life afterwards. One last thing, I feel like the Smithsonian Institute really needs to get the mash set together, along with you two, and travel the state, so as fans and the new fans of the younger generation have a chance to see it and meet y'all. As I know, I would love to see the set and all the memorabilia that they have hidden away. If everyone got together and watched this show, I do believe the world would be a better and kinder place. I love you guys and everyone ever associated with this acclaimed series. Lastly, is there a blooper reel for any of the hundreds of episodes? You all rock and keep it going and going and going. Blessings to you all and have a great day. Oh, my goodness. Alicia, Alicia, Alicia. Gee willikers. Again, uh, my heart is warmed by those words and hearing people say that MASH had such an impact on their life and uh, hearing her almost tear up about it is really, it makes me tear up. I mean, I, 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 it, it will never stop making me feel wonderful hearing all those things. It's just an amazing experience to hear. And could we play the part about how Eeyore was her favorite character again? Could we just play that again? I'm sorry. The message is already self-destructed. Okay. All right. Yeah. All those are wonderful things. <laughs> and uh, boy, I, you know, I'm, I'm sort of at a loss right now. Go ahead, Ryan. Say something really Well, good. you know, yeah, I, I oh, appreciate oh, I, I, well, Never mind, Ryan. Let me just keep talking. Uh, so, <laughs> Okay. I'll be uh, over here if you need me. I'll, I'll see you later. Yeah, just, okay. We're right there in the corner. So <laughs> the blooper reel. Yeah. Uh, is she talking about MASH or a blooper? or our blooper reel i'm not i wouldn't sure oh every episode is our blooper reel are you yeah, kidding this is our yeah. <laughs> this is our blooper reel. yeah we've had we have 70 episodes of blooper reels. <laughs> no we uh she's referring to mash and yes there yeah, are okay. mash bloopers out there on youtube uh we will put a link in the show notes where you can watch some of those and you even i think hear some of your favorite mash stars use some adult language in some of those bloopers as well so if, you know, <sighs> sensitive Ooh. ears uh, you may not want to tune in but uh, yeah there is a blooper reel out there yeah. No, we don't know who played General MacArthur. I don't know if we ever will. I, w I hope that maybe someday we can crack that code. Uh, I like her theory that the uh, rocks that were used to spell out goodbye in the finale were the same rocks that uh, Igor painted. <laughs> <Yeah>. paid, yeah. <laughs> that would be great. And turn them over at night. <laughs> uh, she mentioned the Smithsonian. <laughs> but yes. That you and I should go out on tour with the uh, the Smithsonian set. Yes. That would be fascinating. That would be, that would be fun. Uh, it's not going to happen, but it would be amazing. <laughs> We'll let you in a little secret. We actually had a discussion going with some people from the Smithsonian. A friend of the show, Bren, who uh, was an intern within the Smithsonian Institution, put us in contact with some people there. And we actually had a little email chain going for a while about the possibility of trying to bring the MASH set out for the 50th anniversary, which is coming up next year. And it's not going to happen. So anybody who is hoping for that, I'm sorry to dash your dreams, but that that is not going to happen. Now, I have heard we have heard rumblings that there might be a piece of the set that is going to be put out on display soon. I don't know if we can announce that officially or not, but I do believe that a piece of the set is going to be uh, pulled out of storage to be displayed at the Smithsonian again in the American History Museum. But as for the entire set, because, you know, the Smithsonian has the OR set, they have the swamp, they have a little bit of everything from from the show it's all in storage and as of right now there are no plans to bring those sets out of storage and uh, reassemble them for display you know you never know you never know <laughs> the ability that ryan and i have the power <laughs> that we have in this little podcast uh -huh. we may just be able to influence the smithsonian to at least bring out some of the creamed weenies. At <laughs> least, at least a creamed weenie or two. Those must be rancid by now. They're going to want them out of those drawers <laughs> and into the air, get rid of these. Boy, when they donated everything, they really donated everything. <laughs> Oh, golly. Thank you to everybody who sent us a voicemail for the first 70 episodes. If you would like to send us a voicemail, you can do so by calling and leaving a voicemail three minutes in length or less at 513-436-4077. 
honestly, we love hearing these voicemails because we don't have to talk as much. Yeah. We want to hear these stories in your own voice. So please call and leave a voicemail for an upcoming episode. Yeah. And well, you know, listening to all these uh, wonderful voicemails, it was thank you very much for all the wonderful things you said and uh, the ideas and the concepts and everything. And Gosh, listening to that wonderful woman who became a, a chaplain and so forth based on, you know, her experience with MASH. Those are all really, really moving, as I said. And boy, you know, we love hearing them and don't stop telling us. Um, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for saying those things because it's, it's a really wonderful experience. And, and for me, uh, certainly a guy who thought, well, this is a job and, you know, who's going to care in 10 years? Well, it's a lot more than 10 years, and how much everybody cares is just stunningly beautiful. So thank you from the bottom of Igor's heart. And thanks from me, too. (laughs) Oh, yeah, and Ryan, too. Yeah. Until next time, here's looking up your old address. 